Yo, yo, test, test, one, two. What's up, everybody? All right, so let's address the uh, elephant in the room. New York City is shut down, and uh, I'm stuck in here like a hermit crab who finally found a shell. I think it's time for us all to get comfy and uh, become a YouTuber. <laughs> no, it's not. So if you don't know me or follow me, I'm a director of photography. I shoot commercials, music videos, documentaries, you know, the typical stuff that uh, puts food on my table and fulfills my creative genius. Oh uh, God, I'm not gonna get through this. But to the point of this video, so you've been following me on Instagram for the last few months, you've probably seen my layout entirely changed to uh, panoramic three by one photos. And that is all as a response to using this guy. This is the Minolta Freedom Vista. It's part of the Minolta Peas line, which I think stands for pocket. I could be wrong, could be point and shoot. I haven't done my research. I think it stands for pocket because the thing quite literally fits in your pocket. I think it's only like four inches long and it can't be more than an inch wide. And yeah, that's one of the best parts. And you can take it wherever and it's not even a thing. So yes, physical notes, has a 24 millimeter lens, uh, F4, and it is no bigger than a penny. The camera only really has three operable buttons on it. It's got the shutter release, the timed shutter release, and the no flash button. Now the shutter release is just like any other point and shoot camera. You hit it, it takes the picture. If it's underexposed, the flash will engage. The timed shutter release button, you tap it, red light turns on in the front, gives you 10 full seconds to jump in the shot with your friends or, you know, do whatever you intended with the uh, timed shutter. It also includes a no flash button on the top. Um, I've tried using this. It works and it doesn't work. So when I hold it in certain scenarios where we're just on the brink of the film not being able to be exposed without it, but what I found is if you're in a very dark scenario and you hold it and take the shot, the light meter will read that, oh no, if this flash doesn't go off, you're not getting an exposure to the image. So it decides to flash anyway. In that case, you can put your finger in front of the flash, but <laughs> don't expect to see anything on the negative. That thing's gonna come back empty, kind of like my soul. It is a rangefinder, so I don't have to tell you this. Rangefinder is an optic you look through, helps you frame the shot, but it acts as a guide for where you do frame. And this one is pretty cool because it gives you the panoramic view, that three to one aspect ratio when you look through. You might have to shift it back and forth just to see the edge lines um, because it is pretty wide. There's a clear panel on the back where you put the 35 millimeter film, lets you see the stock you're using and the ASA, nice touch. What can I say? Other than the latch mechanism on the bottom that lets you open the gate, there's a quartz date mechanism on the back of the camera. I had to replace the battery when I got this off eBay. When I put the battery in, jumped on. It has a few different settings for what information you want burned in on the negative. The date actually maxed out at 2019 and I got this at the beginning of 2020. So I think I chose the one that did not show the year um, and instead it shows the day and the time. If you wanted to get rid of this, you could probably just rip the battery out and it won't burn it in on your negative. I should probably do the same, but I kind of like the effect. It just is that little reminder that it's on celluloid and adds that nostalgia to the image that I think we're all seeking. All right, some image notes. So since this thing is a F4 and I'm typically shooting outside in daylight scenarios, this thing is just always bang in focus. My subjects are typically anywhere from five feet in front of me to infinity, a lot of landscapes, a lot of street photography, you know, subjects that are just on the sidewalk next to you. That being said, with how slow this lens is, you're not really gonna be missing focus with this thing a lot. You're pretty much gonna get what you need. And all things considered for how small this camera is and how small the optics are, the lens is pretty sharp. Um, it takes a little work in post, especially if it misses a little bit of focus or the shutter drags a little bit, you might need to sharpen it. I haven't seen a lot of fringing or aberration on the sides of the lens. Uh, from edge to edge, it's it's a pretty clean frame, so no vignetting either, and it's pretty impressive for how small the optic is. Now there is a fun thing you can do with this camera. It gives a pretty interesting composition is just turning it to portrait mode and getting that three to one aspect ratio vertically. Um, I've tried it for a couple shots where I've just wanted a subject to be accompanied by a tall subject in the background, or some have come out eh, but some have come out really cool. I've got a one in Joshua Tree, got one in West Palm Beach. <laughs> Being able to turn it sideways, I just feel like that's not a crop that people are typically used to seeing. So get experimental if you, if you grab this thing. 
All right, so basically to some upsides of the camera. First one I've already mentioned before, it fits in your pocket. I feel like if you're a street photographer, like you wanna be really low profile, Typically, you don't want the subject to even know you're taking the picture until after you've snapped the shutter. This thing is just a little sniper. The only real obstacle to shooting is just getting that slide open. The upside, which is also accompanied by downside, which I'll talk about later, is that it's a no-brainer camera. Anybody can pick this thing up, look into the viewfinder, and get the shot they want. You can't adjust the settings on this camera, but once you know the limitations and you know what it's good for, uh, you won't feel limited by the camera. Um, the only real limitation you feel is when you take it into an environment or a scenario where it's not meant for. So as long as you accept that, I think you're good to go. And you know what they say, limitations tend to breed creativity. And that's what this camera does. It allows you to kind of embrace them and be creative. The last upside for me is the style. I just think it's really cool to be able to have this little thing and shoot a three to one aspect ratio. There's nothing special being done here with the lens. It's really just being cropped uh, inside of the gate. People can hate on you for it and say, why don't you just take it with a typical like five to four ratio or three to two and then crop it in post to what you want. It's like, it's not the reason we shoot on film. The reason we shoot on film is that we want to be surprised and satisfied with what comes out in the negative. Limitations, which I've kind of touched on before, is that you're limited to highly exposed situations. Pretty much daylight, sunset, anything beyond that, you're gonna be using the front flash. And I think the front flash is great. I actually took this to a party recently and took some shots, uh, dark apartment, just using the front flash. And it was able to expose not only the subject, but kind of fill the room. There's something about front flash on 35 millimeter film that's just, it's kind of magical sometimes. And uh, I'm a fan. Some people aren't, whatever, teach their own. Another big limitation is your ISO limiting range. It, the camera will only meter for the range of 200 to 400 ASA. So you're pretty much gonna be picking film that's in between that range. Like I've mostly shot Kodak, gold 200 color, and some Portra 160. Typically if I shoot on Portra 160, I'll take it down the street to my Photoshop and I'll have them push it a stop or two. Comes out great. And obviously the other thing being you can't control your focus, it's autofocus, but you know, it's not really a downside. With point and shoots, that's typically the thing. All right, general overview of the Minolta Freedom Vista. This camera is just a great supplement to whatever kit you're currently shooting on, whatever your kit and caboodle is. I don't know if people say that anymore. Typically in my day bag, I try to bring two to three cameras, and then this guy's just, it takes up no space, it weighs almost nothing. It's just a cool supplement to your kit, wherever you're traveling, wherever you're shooting. I mean, it's just so fun to compose images with this thing, and it's challenged me to be better about composing for wide frames. Portraits can be easy sometimes if you're wide open, one four on a lens, sun's behind your subject, you know, that stuff's easy, guys, like, come on. The real fun is finding wide compositions and making art, making frames that look like paintings. Anyway, guys, that's my review of the Minolta Freedom Vista Panoramic. Hope you enjoyed it. You can pick this thing up on eBay for like a hundred bucks in good condition and it is a joy to use. So anybody out there that's shooting 35, they want a new kind of look, a new approach to their street photography, pick this thing up. You won't be disappointed. All right, thanks guys. See ya.